we're going to talk about what makes an excellent educational app. Uh, I'm Tony Vincent, and let's see, like a lot of people, I'm on Twitter. There you go. Now my remote's on. Uh, just at Tony Vincent. And uh, I have a website called learninginhand.com. And in fact, I have listed some of the apps I'm going to talk about, but we're not really focusing as much on apps as qualities that make these apps great. But I know you're going to say, what app was that? What was the name of that? So I made a list for you. So if you go to learninginhand.com slash slide to learn with the number two, then uh, it'll have the list and some links I talk about. So I think most things should be right up there. Uh, I have spent a lot of time looking at apps. And I bet you have too. So I want to get some of your input before we get started on what you think goes into an excellent educational app. So I want to uh, collect that from you. And no matter which device you're on, you should be able to fill out this Google form. And the URL to get there is tonyv.me, it's a dot me instead of dot com, uh, slash question. So if you type that in your URL field, uh, you should be able to answer. So I'll give you about a minute to do that. What makes a great app? Don't mention app names. We don't care about that right now. But what are the qualities that go into a great educational app? These guys would rather see me move around than stand in one spot. There you go, you got about two minutes. <laughs> All right, on my screen, I can see the answers coming in. So if you haven't yet submitted, uh, get that submitted. And uh, we actually did this yesterday with uh, one of the keynotes. I'm going to put it into Wordle. And we'll see what words are largest in what this group thinks makes a great app. Uh, while I'm creating the Wordle, I want you to talk with people around you. What words do you think will be largest in our Wordle of what makes a great app? So get submitted and then have that conversation while I make the Wordle. Oh, you missed it. Yeah, I'm in the Oh, you Oh, okay, you. Yeah. Not in the All right, the word. 
hurdle is made, are you ready to see if your predictions are correct? We had great things come in, and our Wordle ends up looking like this. So we seem to think interactive, <coughs> engaging, learning, really large there, creativity, uh, thinking, something you can use, apparently. Uh, <laughs> So I'll put this Wordle up uh, on Twitter a little bit later, but uh, very uh, in results, is it expected? Is that what you expected to see up there? Pretty close. Doesn't say free. There were I saw several people put free in there. And uh, we'll talk about all that. So I want to give you my take on what I think makes great educational apps. And a little bit about me. I. Uh, come to you, uh, here is the school as seen by Google Street View. <laughs> uh, Albert Park is not yet finished. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, so they, they made progress, good. <laughs> uh, but here, uh, thanks to Google Earth, I can show you my journey here. So uh, if we leave Albert Park College here and then kind of go across the ocean, go over to my continent. <laughs> Uh, right into the desert, and there is uh, my house in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, they've actually finished building the rest of the houses around me. Uh, but just so you know a little bit of how geeky I am, you know, I'm a former fifth grade teacher, and I'm an education geek and a learning geek. I'm also a tech geek. Uh, I haven't lived all my life in the desert. I moved there four years ago from uh, the middle of the U.S., from Nebraska. But I took this picture. And I thought, I really do belong here in the desert, because in Nebraska, we don't have cactuses, cacti. I don't even know the plural of cactus. But uh, I, I thought, oh, I belong here. I really do. Because there are USB symbols popping up. <laughs> <laughs> but back in 2001, when I was living in, uh, not in the desert, in Nebraska, each of my students got a Palm uh, PDA to use, and that's what really sparked my passion for mobile learning. Definitely, those computers were not nearly as sophisticated as what we have today, but we could, they were definitely mobile. We had apps that we called them applications, lots more syllables. We even had a TV station come in and do a documentary because it was so unusual to see kids with these computers. And I went back and I found some screenshots of the apps we were using. Check this out. This, this feels like the olden days. Uh, here's a mind mapping app. Uh, this was called IdeaPad, and it's made the jump to iPad now, and it's called Idea Sketch. It's by the same developer, but uh, looks very rudimentary there on the palm. Hey, we had spreadsheets. One of my favorites was for my students to make their own spreadsheet to calculate a person's weight and age on other planets. We could do that then, just wasn't nearly as shiny or pretty. Uh, we had an app uh, for uh, spelling, <laughs> to uh, do some spelling practice, uh, making your own quizzes. And I love parts of speech, and I like it when parts of speech can help us do silly things. So we even helped uh, develop an app called Silly Sentences, where it would randomize parts of speech and everything was color coded. It was great. Uh, we even had uh, our own Mad Libs app made so we could make our own Mad Libs. <coughs> and uh, then we didn't have Wi-Fi, but this was the, the technology in 2002 was something called Fling It, where on your desktop computer you could prepare a website to send to your little mobile device because there was no Wi-Fi. So uh, that, that's a little bit of some of my past, but I've kept up and I am... I've just been watching apps develop over the last 12 years to see you know, what, what, what uh, has changed, what stays the same, and, and what makes it great in the hands of students. Uh, I'll admit it, uh, I am a member of the AAAA, and uh, that is the Anti-Acronym Association of America. <laughs> so I try to avoid acronyms whenever I can, but sometimes that's not so possible. Uh, and there's something actually worse than an acronym, and it's called a backronym. When you take a word that was never meant to be an acronym and turn it into one. 
So for instance, uh, podcasts. People say, oh, well, since you don't need an iPod to listen to a podcast, uh, I, the pod stands for personal on demand cast. Or the word wiki, right? Wiki is actually Hawaiian. Wiki, wiki in Hawaiian means quick. But people say, oh, well, well, since people are contributing their own ideas, it stands for what I know is. <laughs> Making up your own acronyms. Well, I, even though I'm a member of the AAAA, I made up some acronyms for the word iPad. See if this describes you. Maybe iPad could stand for uh, I play Angry Birds <laughs> Daily. <laughs> Seriously, though, I think for our theme here this morning, I think it's more fitting for uh, it's providing apps delightfully, right? Really, our iPads are a toolbox to get to those apps. And what I think is a theme for today at Slide to Learn, and definitely was yesterday, is that we're seeing interesting possibilities all day. Okay, before we go any further, we've got to have some fun. So, it's time for a little game. <laughs> And we're going to play some bingo, right? And I have prizes, too. So let's get excited. Bingo. All right. Good, good. I don't know if there's a way. I have my volume all the way turned up. I don't know if there's anything back there. Game shows music should be louder. <laughs> <laughs> She's just pressing buttons. That's what I would do. <laughs> okay, so bingo. I have a website where we can turn our iPads into $500 bingo boards. So you can either go to tonyv.me slash b, or if you're quick on the draw with your QR code reader, uh, I think that should work for most of you. If maybe you're not too far away from the screen. But this will load up a bingo board I made last night. And everybody, when they load it, will get a different one. And you don't even need counters because when you tap the squares, the square will be lit up. Are you getting there? Alright. <laughs> Is it going to work from that far, Dion? No. At least Tony V dot me dot me slash B is easy to type in. So, you experiment. If you tap on a box on your bingo board, it marks it. If you make a mistake, you can tap it again and it unmarks it. Now, because there are prizes involved, please do not refresh your bingo board. That would be considered cheating. <laughs> uh, now, here's what we're going to do. The bingo, you, if you have an app on your board that I mention, then mark it. And it has to be apps that I mention verbally. If they're up on my screen but I don't say it out loud, it does not count. <laughs> And then you, are you familiar with bingo? Do you have that in Australia? Yeah. Yeah. So you either have going across five in a row, going down, or diagonal, either way. Um, last time I did this, somebody yelled bingo because they had one app. So there are more apps. It's possible that your bingo board does not have the app I'm going to be mentioning. So not every app is there, so you have to be eagle-eyed. When you do get bingo, what do you do? Yeah. Yell it out because I don't have unlimited prizes, so you have to be one of the first ones. Even jump up out of your chair too, if you need to. Okay, so that'll kind of keep you on track. If you want to listen for apps. All right. In the App Store, I have this website that tells me about how many are in the App Store currently. There are 675,000 different apps. Uh, that can run on, on our iPads, including the iPad versions and the iPhone versions. That, that's a lot of apps. Uh, I remember doing these presentations, and I was excited. I was, there are 10,000 apps in the App Store. So there are apps about everything, for everything, right? And they say there's an app for that. Um, many of you know me, and I am a cat owner. I have three lovely cats. I'd like to introduce you to Kitty. 
I did not name her, I, but uh, now the name is stuck. Here's Kitty, and there are apps for cats. She plays <laughs> with the laser pointer app. And then Frisky's has a fishing app that you'll see in a moment. So she'll ask me sometimes, can, Tony, can I use your iPad? Sure, sure, Kitty. You can use it. <laughs> and the cool thing is that the, the keratin in their, in their claws are not as... as uh, as, uh, <laughs> as hard as the tree, the black. Yeah. Even has. <laughs> so, the, but don't do it with dogs. They're just cats. And so there are there are apps for cats. Or I'm fascinated with when cats get dressed up. I, I only have one outfit for Kitty. I need to get more. Um, I'm even more fascinated by cats in wigs. And there's an app for that. If you'd like to see what your cat would look like in a wig, there's the Kitty Wigs app. And so, look, doesn't she look ravishing? Here she looks more like George Washington. And they, you can actually buy these wigs. They're quite expensive, but you can see what they look like, and then from the app, order the wig. There. You can even... Uh, Put some sunglasses on there. And it doesn't even have to be a picture of a cat. <laughs> so with 675,000 different apps, there's, there's a lot. And in fact, just in the education category, which we don't limit ourselves in, there's great apps outside of the education category, there's about 67,000 apps there. And this is pretty cool. <laughs> Every day, added to the app star, store are about 785 apps, every day. So if there's not a dog wig app in the app store right now, there might be tomorrow. <laughs> then anybody want to take a guess? What percentage of apps in the app store are free of charge? 55, great guess. 32. This percentage changes all the time. Currently. It's 48% of the apps in the App Store are free of charge. And then another 25% uh, are just 99 cents. The most Apple will let anybody charge is $999.99. So do not pay more than that for an app. <laughs> so with all of these apps, how do, you know, Apple does have some quality control, but that does not mean that it's a great app. We've all downloaded dud apps, haven't we? <laughs> Kate hasn't, but everybody. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've been looking at app checklists and rubrics and ways to evaluate, and uh, I have a couple to share with you. Uh, I have uh, this this rubric here is uh, it's on, linked off of uh, my website, and what I've done. Oh, come back. Okay, there we go. So. It's set up as a rubric, of five being the best score, and it was really hard to decide on the criteria, but these are the ones I'll go through and show you some sample apps, uh, some good, some bad, in each of those criteria, like usability and engagement. And then this is available as a PDF right from my website, too, so you can certainly use it. Uh, the first thing on there is relevance, right? We, Kitty Wigs probably is not relevant to much of what you're doing in the classroom. We want apps that are relevant. And you know, so my fifth graders, they would we'd study the inside of a cell, and this app would be completely relevant. Uh, Hudson Alpha Eye Cell is free, and lets you explore either an animal, bacteria, or plant cell in 3D. And you can tap a piece of it, and it tells you what that uh, organelle or that uh, part of the cell does. So here's just a, a screenshot uh, showing you that that I can tap the mitochondrion, and then it tells me what it does. And then what's really cool is the text up there. I'm on basic. That's what my fifth graders would need. But to, or maybe I have a, some advanced fifth graders. They can tap intermediate, and it gives them a different description. Or there's even advanced if you really know your biology and uh, tells you even more details. So, that, so it, it could be relevant if you're studying this. If you're showing it to a first grader who has no idea what a cell is, it's obviously not going to score high in relevancy. I like that we can change the text, and that takes me to the next criteria, and that's customization. 
sorry for the Z, but I just couldn't put it, put it in. It's against, uh, <laughs> against my spelling there. Uh, or the Z, even, sorry. <laughs> I just can't get it right. Uh, the, for instance, a lot of the math apps are customizable. Uh, math Drills Lite is, is one of my favorites because you get to pick what kind of math problem students would be drilling over in there. It gives them some visual aids. But then when you set it up, before you even play, you can decide how high the, the numbers will go and the answers and what kind of clues you'll get. It, it's almost too much <laughs> customization. Is that, is that such a thing? Uh, then other apps don't let you customize at all. Have you seen Factor Samurai? Again, this would be completely relevant to my fifth graders because we looked at prime and composite numbers and I wanted my students to be able to identify if a number is prime or composite. Uh, Factor Samurai is a takeoff on, I know you've seen this one probably, Fruit Ninja, is that ringing a bell? Instead of just mindlessly doing fruit, Factor Samurai lets you only pick one of three levels, so there's not much customization here. But then numbers fly up from the bottom of the screen and you have to take your sword and slice the composite numbers, but not the prime numbers. <laughs> So if you slice a prime number, you only get three of those. Uh, and you get more points the more slices you do. But, a, but the problem is there's only three levels. And I know that even for myself, I would like to have more customization to that, but not all apps allow that. There's a, another app that, that has some fun gameplay. Uh, Futaba is one where you can have up to four people around one iPad to play a game. So I, I like that, I like the social aspect of that. Uh, so here's <coughs> one thing like, what is that, what's that a picture of in the middle? And you have two players playing on opposite sides of the screen, and the first person to touch the right word gets the point. And then a new picture zooms into the middle of the screen. So it's fun gameplay, and they have some sample ones in there, some sight words, and it, it, mostly for younger kids. But this lets you customize the pictures that appear in the middle. So you're able to bring in pictures and words and associate it for, with vocabulary, with uh, famous people, uh, even math problems you could put in there that students can play this game. So I love that Futaba is, it lets you do that. So here, maybe I'm doing uh, uh, antonyms. And so I could bring in a picture of this duck. It could be a picture you take with your camera or one you've saved from the web. Uh, here. Uh, <laughs> That's supposed to be sad. You can't see it very well. Um, I, it looks. It, don't make me sad because that face is really ugly. <laughs> uh, uh, so I, I put in the opposite of happy. So you can have your very own pictures as well. So I love the customization of these apps. <coughs> Another one, this is a free one. Who to buy is not free, but uh, Little Speller Free is obviously free. And this is great, again, for littler kids where you can put in your very own spelling words with your own uh, pictures and your own sound. So uh, this is one I'd like to actually show because they're really fun to put together. Anybody got a bingo yet? Getting close? Yeah. Not, I've been spewing apps left and right. Come on. <laughs> Three in a row? You never played bingo before, Jenny? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to launch a little speller here. And by default, they have three-letter words in there, but it, don't, don't let the three letters fool you because you can customize it to anything. So I'm going to tap the little gear, and uh, I have one called Tony. And I'm going to actually go into this one. Oh, let's customize it. That's the thing when you customize things is that uh, you have more options. So I'm going to add a word and a picture. Let's let's say computer. So I'm going to see. I should have done a word with a Z in it. Do banana. Tony. You should do banana. <laughs> banana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one in Australia. <laughs> So there's a picture, here's my uh, computer. I'll use that and then I can record computer. One thing with mirroring up here, the 
the audio or the video cuts off when you're recording audio, but that's okay. It came back. I can play it back. Computer. All right, sounds great. Let's save that one, and let's do another one. How about this one? Handsome. Uh, let's just uh, let's just take a photo on this one. Um, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Ooh, that's it. Nobody ever liked that picture. All right. This lighting is bad. We should have turned it off. All right. <laughs> okay, and record. Handsome. Reset audio. Let's try this again. <laughs> Handsome. <laughs> Saying you got this word wrong. <laughs> so I can add as many to this list as I like, but I can go to uh, now. I go back. I make sure I just have that list turned on, and now my students can just push this play button. Computer. It says the word. There's a picture, and then I have to with my very own words. That's my own computer. If you ever look for clip art on a computer, it, 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 some of them are things that our students, our little kids have never seen before. The computers don't look like that anymore. So. <laughs> computer. <laughs> and then, oh, I get this one. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, you, you get the idea of how you can customize that. So that those kind of apps where you can put your own content into them, I think are the very best. Uh, if you can find content that exactly matches what you teach, that's even better because you don't have to spend time customizing it, but chances are you're not going to find exactly that. So thank you, little speller, and it's free. So then we saw in little speller too, it says good job, right? Uh, it gives some feedback, and feedback can be important to what we see in an educational app. Uh, and the more specific, the better. If I had spelled something wrong, it, would be, it, it doesn't actually let you put the word in the wrong spot. It makes this boing sound, which little kids like to make the boing sound more than the good job sound. It's a hilarious, hilarious sound. Uh, but if we can have apps that give the student feedback and the teacher, that would be wonderful. But you've looked at apps. Not many of them do that, do they? Uh, Sentence Builder, it, 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 this is not a free app, but it does give you some feedback in that you... Uh, Put a sentence together and it will tell you if you need to try again. And uh, no, in the interest of time, I'll keep, keep going here. Uh, I'll show you my screenshots. So you it's kind of you line up the sentence, like what do you see happening in this picture? And then you click check to see if you're right. And if you are, it says good job. If not, it tells you to try again. But at the end, you're given a report. It's prob this is probably more useful to the teacher than the kid, but uh, you get that kind of feedback which you can go back and look at later too. Some feedback comes naturally within the app. Uh, there's up in pieces where you can make your own puzzles. Uh, you just bring in an image from the web. Uh, so I'm gonna say instead of that ship, I'm gonna pick something from my photo library. Uh, oh, here, the, the schedule for today maybe. And I'll make that into a puzzle. And then the puzzle pieces are arranged along the bottom. You bring them up. And when you're done, it says, congratulations, you finished the puzzle. That's all the feedback you get, but uh, maybe you want to know how long it takes, but otherwise your feedback is that you've actually finished it. Then other ways that apps provide feedback are really not the app at all. The teacher provides feedback, but the app gives the avenue for that. So a, a 99 cent app is tools for students. It's actually the number four. I should change that in the slide. Uh, but Tools for Students gives you a variety of graphic or You got a bingo? So I'm just checking. Did, when you mentioned like Revoke before, is that included? Yeah, if I say it out loud. So, yeah. You got a bingo? Bingo. Okay. Can you come on up here? You're able to just, just, just check and see if you're. Uh, don't clear your boards yet. All right. Let's see. So, Angry Birds, yes. Hudson Alpha Icell. Kitty wigs, up in pieces, and game for cats. Congratulations. So I have a $20 iTunes gift card for you. And I have something that uh, 
I think many of you would be interested in. Let me call up the slides so people can see it big. Don't, don't go away yet. I got another prize for you. <laughs> you don't want to be on Ustream, do you? <laughs> oh, come on, slide. Where are you? So this is a stylus, and it's made specifically for kids. And it looks like a crayon. In fact, it's called an app crayon. Uh, they, you can uh, contact them. It's about $3 each. I'm not sure what shipping from the States are. But it has a, a tri, like a pencil, this tri grip. So it's a training grip. It has a sticky uh, uh, rubber grip that kind of slows kids down so they can write. It's actually one of my favorite styluses. I'll pull this out as opposed to other styluses. So what, what grade level do you work with? I'm um, across the board, four, okay. four to six. Four to six, so there's probably some fourth graders that, that would love that, and now you have one. Yeah. It might be the only one in Australia right now. <laughs> so we'll keep on going with bingo, so if, uh, don't clear your board, you can keep, keep on going, and I have another iTunes card. I do not have another app crayon. That's, that's for the very first bingo winner. <laughs> All right, after that little sidetrack. Okay, so we were talking about tools for students. It, you can pick a graphic organizer and then students can fill them out. And then once they fill them out, how do they get feedback from them? It doesn't tell you if you're right or wrong, but oftentimes graphic organizers don't necessarily have a right or wrong answer. <coughs> so what this, this app does is when you're done, you click the email button and then it attaches your graphic organizer as an email and you just send it off to the teacher. And then the teacher can give feedback through email. So it's not the app giving feedback, but it does provide an avenue for the teacher to do that. Well, that's it. Uh, it's called, let's see, I have the icon open. Oh, no, I went too far. It's called uh, Tools for Students. <coughs> then I, I prefer apps that have our students practice higher order thinking skills. Uh, that's not always what our apps are about, but I think if we can push our students toward the, the top of Bloom's taxonomy, that's all the better. And that includes creating and evaluating. So uh, how many of you are fans of Puppet Pals? You get to create great things. Uh, in fact, let's, let's use, I'm going to do some creating right now. I'd like to make a little Puppet Pals for you. Just a short little one, because not all of you raised your hands. And uh, so, Puppet Pals, come on down, Puppet Pals. So with Puppet Pals, there's a free version, and then you can pay in-app purchase to get a little bit more, uh, to open up some more puppets. But uh, I'm going to start, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose this calculator guy. Um, uh, maybe I'll pick the... Fairy. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to go, and you can pick out some backgrounds. So let's be in the forest and the castle. Sounds good. Now, I can arrange anything that happens in this box in the middle will be made into a movie, right? And I can pull the ropes at the top to change the background at any time. This is combined with my voice to make a movie. It, I, ta I was trying to teach myself how to do flash animation about 10 years ago, and to make you know one little movie like this on, on a laptop in Flash would have taken me hours, and I can do it here in 30 seconds. So here, here's, a, here's my movie. Let's, let's give it a try. Oh, I wish I had money to buy apps. Did someone say wish? Yes, I'm broke, but I want more apps for my iPad. Well, I have good news for you. Of the 675,000 apps in the App Store, 48% of them are free. You mean I can choose from nearly 324,000 different apps? My, you're a good calculator. <laughs> Let's go to my castle and download apps. All right. I didn't know fairies lived in castles. They do. All right. <laughs> and, and then the world premiere of the video. Oh, I wish I had money to buy apps. <laughs> Did someone say wish? Yes. So I'm we don't have to listen to all that. You know what it says. <laughs> but 
the mouths don't move, but you, you kind of jostle them around it to be able to tell who's, who's moving around with. Oh, double tap. But you have to be careful because if you tap the screen too hard, you can definitely hear that in the microphone. Does it export? Yes. That's what I love in, is that it exports right to the camera roll, and then you can uh, connect it with the, the white cable or email it or if it's less than 50 seconds. Put it up on Dropbox. So, okay. My, my you're a good calculator. Okay. <laughs> so, that's Puppet Pals. You know what, though? <coughs> they're, they're, I'm actually not a fan of Angry Birds, but I know a lot of people are. And they're trying like crazy to figure out how to bring that into the classroom. But you can. It's higher order thinking skills, actually. If you look up anything about game-based learning, the, the game itself is great, but it's more of the conversation that happens around the game, trying to explain the game to others, trying to come up with the best strategy. That truly is higher order thinking, and maybe that can raise some justification for bringing Angry Birds into your classroom. Uh, you can also use it as evaluation, right? Evaluating the app. Is it a good game? Another item on that rubric is engagement. Does it actually bring the kid, the, the students into uh, what, you, what you want them to do? Uh, I spoke to many of you yesterday about project-based learning and coming up with a deep question that students are dying to answer. And they use the different apps on their iPad to do that. I think also we have a lot of choice. You know, if all your students are using the same app at the same time, you're not offering them choice, and I think you're missing out on a big opportunity. Oh, I just this this is just in. Um, we have a news flash. <laughs> all right, uh, here it is. Sorry, this is. Sorry, just just coming in on on Twitter right now. Um, there was a study from uh, in in the Harvard uh, Business Review here, and they uh, and they they're talking about motivation. Uh, and they, they've actually come to determine that when we choose for ourselves, we are far more committed to the outcome by a factor of five to one. That's a very timely news update, isn't it? Because that's just what we were talking about. Uh, so if you want your students to be five times more engaged, give them a choice. Don't just tell them what to do. Let them have some choice. And we have lots of apps that, that, can, that can help with, with choice or with engagement. Motion Math is, now they have a whole series of apps where you use the accelerometer to, to bounce around on math questions. Bingo? Yes. Bingo. Okay, bring, bring your board up. <laughs> All right, let's, let's, let's see if, so she has Sentence Builder, yep. Motion Math, yep. Mad Libs. I guess I we didn't talk about the app specifically, but I did mention oh, I, I it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Futaba and Puppet Pals. So congratulations. <laughs> Good. Should have called it out faster. No, no, we'll, we'll take it. We'll take it. Sorry. <laughs> my, my worst fear is that like five or six people are going to have bingo at the same time. I only had two. So you can relax now. Our bingo, I've given up the bingo prizes. <coughs> <laughs> oh. oh, we oh we do okay. Did you, did anybody clear their board? No. No. Okay, we have we have one more prize. Oh yeah yeah. Okay there. <laughs> you win some headphones. All right, and there's a guy with sunglasses wearing them, so they must be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ooh, a cross tool for students, madness, kitty wig, game for cats. Excellent, congratulations. <laughs> so back to engagement. Motion math uh, is has actually done some research into their own apps, and they found that students who played the game 20 minutes for five days improved on a fraction test, an average of 15%. Not spectacular, but at least they didn't do worse. <laughs> uh, and the students' attitude to fractions improved 10%. And uh, virtually all the students rated the game as that it helped them learn. And so those are the kinds of things. We, we want students to see the value in it. And if we can turn something that like fractions into a game, all the better. And the last item on my rubric is sharing. 
if what we make on the in the app can't be shared out then it, and it only lives on the iPad that, that's no good and we have a lot of apps that, that do that you make it on the iPad and it doesn't ever leave it and we, we want to be able to share so you're probably familiar with the show me interactive whiteboard right you can write on this whiteboard and everything you do like with puppet pals is recorded combined with your voice and makes a nice movie and it's pretty convenient. You log in with a Show Me account, which means students have to have an account or you have a class account. And then it loads it up right up to showme.com for others. So you go to showme.com and there are thousands of videos that people have made in Show Me. They're all categorized. Uh, some are better than others. But what I don't like about Show Me, and I would rate it lower for the sharing piece of, of an excellent Ed app, is that it doesn't allow you to export it to the camera roll, which means you can't use it in other apps. Uh, it's, it, you can only share it to show me. And if I wanted to put the video in my slideshow here, it's a pain because I'd have to go and I'd have to use some sort of download helper to get it from the web. So I like an app that show me is free. Explain everything is $2.99, but I really do think it's worth it because it has a lot more sharing features. Uh, it lets you share to... Here's the background of something, but uh, it lets you share to the photo roll, YouTube, email, Dropbox, Evernote, or Box. I'll just talk so through it. They give you so many options of where so you want 675,000 <laughs> apps in the App Store. I got to wondering, if you lined up all those app icons in a row, how far would they go? Would they go uh, down a hall, right, 675, or would they go down the street? Would it go across town? Or would 675 app icons lined up in a row with no gaps or overlaps go to another country? So uh, we figured out, I, I measured, and an app icon on my iPad screen is 1.4 centimeters. So with that, with 1.4 centimeters, I calculated that it would stretch, are you ready for this? It would stretch all the way 9.45 kilometers. And you'd be walking across a different app the size on your iPad. That's a lot of apps. It would take you probably an hour and a half to walk that far past all the apps that are available. There's my calculations, in case you're wondering. Uh, and then Apple has said that they have sold 25 billion apps. So how far would those icons stretch? 25 billion, 1.4 centimeter apps. Uh, it would actually stretch, that, that would be enough to stretch all the way to the moon. Or to go about nine times around the circumference of the Earth. So there are a lot of apps out there. And I show you this in the spirit of sharing. In that... An app like Explain Everything lets me share that video in a variety of places. So I'll be able to share it onto Twitter later. iMovie allows sharing. that lets you go to places like YouTube and, and uh, Vimeo, Facebook. So the, the more sharing, the better. Uh, and then some places... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Some places, or some... Apps have their own website they send to, like Show Me. Have you seen SnapGuide? Uh, SnapGuide is free, and it, it, it's an app and a website. And what it allows you to do is take pictures and make how-to guides. So you take a picture or a video, give instructions, that's step one. Then you do the same thing again for step two for as many steps as you like. Uh, so a lot of teachers are putting Snap Guides together you know, with their students or for their students. I thought I'd show you a cooking one. It's really great for cooking. People just pull their iPhone out and they take a picture every step of the way in a recipe. So here's one. This one is called Apple Smiles. So I, this, this turns out cool and creepy at the same time. So they, this is all made on an iPhone, but then it's on the web for anybody to view. So you can share it out on the web. Everybody can see it. Step one, you need apples. Step two, you need lemon. Step three, you need marshmallows. Step four, you need some peanut butter. Step five, slice the apples uh, and put the lemon on them. A slice the lemon, put the lemon on them. Step eight, then you peanut butter them. Are you seeing what's coming up? Is it why it's creepy? Then you place the marshmallows in between the apple slices and you have a plate full of smiles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So you can learn things like that on SnapGuide or make your very own and share them with the world. So, so I have the rubric, but uh, and I think I could go on a whole nother hour. Uh, I have the rubric, but what? It doesn't fit all apps, like utility apps and apps that can do a lot more for us. So I've also put together a checklist. And some of this has a lot of the things I think that we agreed on at the beginning of our session about what makes a good app. And now after I've made this, I keep seeing things to add to the list. And apparently, you know, with a checklist, the more checks, the better the app is. So I've made this rubric. I've made this checklist. But honestly, I don't pull them out every time I download an app. I just have it at the back of my mind. Is it going to be relevant? Is it going to fit my purpose? Does it allow sharing? Does it have some feedback pieces to it? Does it not crash? You know, there's a lot of technical things too about does it work on your network? Uh, and ratings, ratings can be important. I, I, I was looking up apps and I found this Math Evolve app and I looked at its ratings and I gotta check it out because it has 125 five stars and barely any any negative ratings at all. So Math Evolve must just be simply awesome. Or that guy's mom has 125 different <laughs> iTunes accounts. <laughs> now, one of the things that, that's not in the rubric, but it's on my checklist, is that the content that you make should be able to be transferred to other apps. The unfortunate thing, as cool as Little Speller was, I can't put what I create on Little Speller onto another device unless I back up the first device and then re-image it from that. That's a huge undertaking. So that's pretty sad. If I wanted you know, a, five of my iPads to have a Little Speller list on there, I have to input it five times. That, that's a lot of work. So I wish they could have sharing there. So it's going to have a ding for that on its checklist. Uh, but Futaba, that game where you can put the pictures in the middle and you play it, They've thought this out, and you can save your games to Dropbox, and then on another iPad, get it from Dropbox, so you don't have to input the game every time. So that's something to look out for in apps. Plus, do apps work with voiceover and speak selection? You know, a lot of these accessibility features, you got to try that out, because if you're having, well, speak selection's awesome, because anybody can use that, but you might have students who need it. Then, then you want to look out for apps where you can have multiple students use it. Definitely Futaba as a game, multiple students can use it. But some apps designed for classrooms have thought this out, and they know that not all of us are in one-to-one -one environments, so they've, they have multiple users, like Math Bingo. Bingo theme, right? Uh, where students play a little game and they fill out a bingo board, but you can put your own bingo. names in there. <laughs> Congratulations. You get a smile. <laughs> the prizes are gone. <laughs> but we're very proud of you. <laughs> uh, the problem with this is that anybody, any student can go in and log, go in as another student. It's not password protected. They can delete their accounts. Um, there's Kids Journal where they can keep a daily journal with what they've learned. You can have a different student each one, in each one, but the problem is, again, they're not password protected, uh, but they can put their own little doodads in there. So check out that checklist, because I have to, uh, it, you know, it's tea time, right? There's a, um, you know, check out apps by teachers, though. There's, there's a growing number of teachers making apps, uh, like Pupil Picker. It'll randomly pick uh, students in your classroom. So we have apps by Jared Robinson. Did you come back today, Jared? No. He's right. not here. I told him I'd mention him. So I said, well, if you're not going to be here tomorrow, I'll take your picture. So you might have sat next to that, that man yesterday, and you were sitting next to an app developer and teacher. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tom, his his well, website is... Too, in Linda. <laughs> oh, and what, what, what's your app? I've made um, a couple. Uh -huh. Writer's Hat is probably my more... Writer's hat, and the developers you're sitting right next to. Her. Oh my gosh, with the superstar right here. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, to check that one out. Uh, so apps by teachers, because teachers know what we need in the classroom. So I'm I'm trying to put together. I'll have a blog post someday about all these apps from teachers. So I need to make sure I put yours in there or email me if I forget, because it needs needs to be in there. Then, oh, 
Okay, we're so over time. Not everything has to be an app. Don't forget, there's the internet out there, and there are some great websites. When I went to think, I, I wanted to make a mad lib to sum up our uh, time together here, and I couldn't find an app that I liked that, would, that I could make a mad lib for us to fill in. Uh, but I found wordlibs.com, and it works perfectly fine in my iPad's web browser. I don't need an app. And it was that aha to me that, Tony, you tell other people this, and then you forget. Not everything is an app. We can still use websites. So uh, I put this out on Twitter if you wanted to check it out to fill in a little summary of our time together this morning, uh, where you'll put in the parts of speech, and a hilarious story will ensue that has to do with evaluating educational apps. And that's on WordLibs, and I'll, that should be out on Twitter now. Then we have great places to find apps. Anybody a Flipboard user in here? Yes. Anybody a Twitter user in here? Yes. If you, both of these have you, when they live together, this is great. So I just want to end with where you can find more great apps. I think that if a teacher has taken the time to mention an app on Twitter, then it's probably something pretty good. So I like to experience Twitter through Flipboard. Flipboard, I, I shared that yesterday. It was free for a, for a limited time. And then it will call up, it should, you can go directly to the app store sometimes in here if it's not blocked. <laughs> so, so check out using Flipboard and Twitter together to discover apps because it, uh, it looks nice, it's painless. You don't even have to be signed into Twitter to do it. And those, those hashtags, and the slide to learn hashtag looks great inside of Flipboard. You can experience the conference as a magazine, and that's, that's Flipboard. Well, I started out with the question uh, of what makes an excellent educational app? And I think that was the wrong question to ask. So I'd like to reword that slightly and uh, ask you the question, instead of what, what makes an educational app, it's more about who makes an app educational. It's how it's used, right? So that means the answer is you. Thank you for listening.